Public may well be the single best investing app in the world, beating out competitors such as Webull, M1 Finance, or even Robinhood. And in this video, I'm going to be going over all the different features in Public, comparing them to those other investing apps so that you can decide what you think of them for yourself. I have used a ton of different investing apps, Beanstalks, Webull, Cash App Investing, M1 Finance, Robinhood, and so hopefully I can offer some perspective on what Public has that these other apps don't have, or what Public may be lacking. And spoiler alert, this app may be the first app that I would truly call a Robin Hood killer. So hit the like button if you want and let's dive right into the app. The first page when you open the app is this home page here. At the top, it shows what your daily performance has been in your portfolio, as well as this kind of Twitter-like social media feed. This is really what makes Public completely unique, is the fact that it has all these different people discussing stocks directly in the app and sharing these ideas and having you be able to follow them in the kind of social media-like experience. For example, if I were to click on this person right here, Willa, I can see their particular portfolio, I can see how many followers they have, as well as who they follow, and it looks a lot like Twitter. Now at the bottom here is really where we start to see the deeper integration between social media and stock investing. We can see Willa's portfolio here of all the different stocks that she owns. Also under Willa here, we can see different themes that she is following. So she is following health and wellness, women in charge, combat carbon, and green power. So if I were to click on one of these themes, let's say health and wellness, this is a theme that was made by public along with different stocks that kind of go along with that theme. So let's say that you see the health and wellness market as likely having a surge in the next couple years. Well, here are a bunch of stocks in that market that you might be interested in investing. Additionally, in here, we also have different ETFs that fit along the same theme. So if you're not an individual stock investor and you'd rather go for just an index, you can do that here as well. Now, if we go back to that influencers page, we can also see different posts that this person has posted. And if I wanted to, I could also message people directly in the app. So really you can tell just by looking at the home page here, what public's priorities are. Their number one priority is gonna be you tracking your own portfolio. And number two is the ability to share your portfolio in stock trades with other people. Now we'll get into the actual portfolio here later, but first let's go to the explore page. This is where you can actually search for stocks or ETFs that you want to invest in. Now, in addition to the search bar, there's also all these pre-made categories that you could invest in. So you have the top movers of the day. So stocks that have moved up or down the most. You have stocks that are new to the market. So these are stocks that have IPO'd recently, like Krispy Kreme, I guess. And if we scroll down even farther, we see those same themes that we saw earlier under the person's account. So there's all these different themes that I could invest in. So food delivery, for example, I could invest in different stocks that I think will address this market the best. If we keep on going down, we get down to different people that I can follow. The kind of people being suggested to me right now tend to be different stock journalists or people who work for public. If I scroll down even farther, there's these featured profiles. Now, I haven't really seen a huge pattern in the kind of people who are featured on this. For example, you have Ryan Leslie here who it says is a multi-platinum musician and social entrepreneur. Seems like kind of a strange person to follow on an investing app, but there's a variety of people out there, which I guess is a good thing. Finally, if we keep on scrolling down on this explore page, you get back to this week's highlights, which is basically just the same social media feed that we saw before. Now, if we go back to the search bar here, I can pretty much search any stock that I want to here, as well as any person that's on this app. So for example, if I wanted to search Graham Stephan, I could search him and find him on here. And if I wanted to search a stock like say Snowflake, I could also search for that. Now you'll notice there's a few things here that I can't search for. So for example, Bitcoin, there's no cryptocurrencies in this app. And I also don't have the ability to trade options or other over the counter stocks. This app is only limited to stocks that are trading on one of the major exchanges. So now moving on to the third tab, we have our inbox. In here, you can actually message people directly within this app. So if I click start a conversation, theoretically I could search for, let's look for Graham Stephan again and I could message him, I could basically DM him directly within public. That's really all there is here. I mean, you can also save different posts if you find something interesting. But let's now move on to my actual stock portfolio, which is the final tab here. You can see here that I have $71.25 invested in stocks with $10 in cash. The reason for that is I own a fractional share in Amazon, which it says is worth $71.17 right now. Now, if I actually open up Amazon, you'll see that one share of Amazon actually costs $3,500. When I first signed up for public, they gave me the option to buy $65 of a stock. I think some of the options they gave me were Amazon, Tesla, there might've been some other ones as well, but I ended up picking Amazon. So what they did was they invested $65 worth of a share of Amazon. So I don't own a full share of the company, but I do own a percentage of a share and public just lets you put in as much money as you want into a company, making it really easy for people who might not have 
$2,500 to invest. So aside from the ability to buy fractional shares, one of the biggest advantages to public is their ridiculously high sign-up bonus. When you sign up right now, they give you $70 worth of a stock just for signing up. You don't even have to deposit money. I mean, you can see right here, I only transferred in $10 of my own money and the rest of that money came directly from public. Now, also in here, you can notice that I have a portfolio and then below that, there's this long-term category. Now I can move Amazon to the long-term category and it will essentially add it to a long-term portfolio, which just psychologically lets me know that I'm not supposed to sell this in the short term. I'm not gonna post this to my feed, so I'll dismiss that. So I can transfer stocks in and out of long-term whenever I want, it doesn't really matter. It's just psychologically, if you have a stock held in a long-term position, maybe it gives you that extra nudge not to sell it in a panic when something happens to the company. Now, if I want to deposit more money into public, one of the nice features is I can use a checking account like I have here, or I can deposit money using a debit card. Now, normally when you use a checking account, you do an ACH transfer, which takes three to five business days for your money to deposit. But if you use a debit card, that money deposits immediately. So it gives you a little bit of a speed advantage. Now I do have $10 in cash sitting in this app right now. So let's go and buy a stock. So let's say I wanted to buy Snowflake. I searched for it before, so it's in my recommended. If I open up the stock here, I can see a basic summary of the stock's stock price over the last couple days, weeks, months, years even. I can also see an about section summary of the stock. And if I keep on going, I also see this rating on what Wall Street thinks of this stock. Now, personally, I think that this rating is completely useless and I would never rely on it, but it's extra information. If I keep on going, there's also different events that might be coming up for the company. This I think is super useful. I could also see different news around the company, different articles that I could read. And then I can also see any themes that this fits into. So this fits into software as a service companies. Finally, if I go down, I can actually see the different earnings for the company, how they performed versus how they were expected, what their market cap is, what their trading volume is. And then if I keep on going, as always, I run into the social media feed and I can see different people who are discussing Snowflake. So maybe if I had some idea of why I wanted to invest in this, I could go here to see if that idea actually holds water or if other people have arguments against it. So let's go ahead, click invest. I don't actually have to enter the price of the stock because I'm just buying a fractional share. So I'll just enter $10 and click invest. So now I invest in Snowflake and public is going to ask me if I want to post something about this to the feed. If I wanted to, I could make this private, but I'll just click done. I'm okay with it posting it. And that was it. I bought a share of Snowflake. Now notice that there was no commission fee in that transaction. Now, a lot of us might take that for granted nowadays with apps like Robinhood offering free trades, but the difference is public does not accept payment for order flow. Payment for order flow is essentially where a company will sell your trades to high frequency traders in exchange for some amount of money back. Now, there's a lot of controversy around that practice because theoretically those high frequency traders could use that information to front run your trades and give you a worse price. Public, however, does not make money that way. They make all of their money based on interest earned in the cash that you leave sitting in your account as well as through tips that you can send to the app. Later on, they said that they may also offer a subscription service. This puts them one step ahead of pretty much every investing app. Robinhood, Webull, M1 Finance, all of them sell your trades for order flow. Now, the last thing I wanna show you within this app is let's say you have a company that pays out dividends. You can actually change a setting within this app to automatically reinvest those dividends for you. So if I go down, scroll down to dividend reinvestment, I can change this from save my dividends to auto reinvest my dividends. That way I'll get the compound growth of having dividends reinvested continually in the stock. So what do I think of public overall? Well, I think the whole social mediafication of stock investing in general is a really interesting idea. It's something that's already happening on websites such as Reddit or Twitter or obviously YouTube. So pairing that directly with stock investing is kind of an obvious thing to do, yet nobody's really thought to do it up until now. Now, I always worry that sharing stock information in the form of just a few characters can lead people to make uninformed stock decisions. But at the same time, the ability to discuss different theories about stocks and have your ideas challenged, I think makes you a better investor. While I was actually filming this video, I ran across this live event that was happening on public where different people were actually having a live audio only discussion around the stock market. I thought that was pretty cool and it was very similar to Clubhouse if you've seen that app. Now other than the social media aspect, this app is really easy to use and in a lot of ways it's a carbon copy of apps like Robinhood or Cash App Investing. Just without the ability to invest in options with Robinhood or to transfer money to others in the case of Cash App Investing. The app also is much simpler than 
more advanced investing apps like say Webull where you have tons of different menus and customizations that you can dive into or M1 Finance which offer more options for portfolio management. To me, this app really feels like the most middle of the road option. There are apps out there for absolute beginners like Beanstalks from Kevin O'Leary which really focuses on stock education. There's also more advanced apps like Webull which are really focused on more advanced traders. But I think the majority of people fall somewhere in the middle and public really addresses that market pretty well. The app has a nice balance of detailed information about a company if you want it, but at the same time, it has a nice clean UI that's easy to navigate if you just wanna buy and sell some stocks. All those features, plus the ridiculously high signup bonus of $70, I think this app, at least in the US, really is a Robin Hood killer. Really the biggest disadvantage to this app is it is only available in the US, and you could say that maybe not being able to trade options or crypto is a disadvantage, but I think honestly for most people, that still isn't a huge issue. But let me know what you think of public and let me know what your favorite investing app is. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.